Hi, and welcome to our three-year anniversary celebration. Uh, yay! Yay! <laughs> we're going to have hats, so there's a little piñata, and that's where we're hitting. <laughs> it's a small so, moment. Yeah. Three years. So, this, is, this is a lot. Three years. We yeah. have kept it going. Um. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I just jumped in. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> introduce us. Introduce the day. Yeah, yeah. Three. So we've been. Yeah. So the, it's May of twenty twenty four, and we started in May of twenty twenty one. So we've been around for three. We've been doing this continually for three years. I mean, occasionally we took a break for like a month or so. But oh, sorry, I'm not crying. I'm not crying. <laughs> um. But um, yeah, so it's been three years. It's hard to believe. I mean, we have 39 episodes. So what is that an average of? I'm not sure. Is that 12 episodes a year? We did one uh, a month. So. No, yeah, we, we sometimes we had split. more than, we had, sometimes we had split episodes. Okay, so now let me do, tell, let me math calculate. Math is not our, <laughs> our strength. Would it be 36? 39 35, divided 12. by three, 13 episodes a year, I guess on the average i guess which is um in podcast life or whatever is not huge but you know we're doing all right i think we kept it going that's what we, we are the little engine that could we kept going yeah <laughs> so this is our celebration episode and we want to talk about what the the podcast has done for us what we have learned and how it has changed us and make us, I think, I think, and at least I feel like I am a better artist because of it. And I have overall, it, it, you know, I think it has helped me a lot. And we're going to go into, into details because I remember how messed up I was at the beginning. <laughs> how nervous. Yeah, it, we, uh, before we go into all the other stuff, yeah. When we start, like we literally started, what is in a week or weekend? Like we, lit, we yes. just, it just, no planning. Like, no. <laughs> it, okay, let's go back. It was 2020, the pandemic. 2021. Uh, it was 2021, right. We had just gone over yeah. the pandemic. It, people were, you know, we were still like in isolation. Yeah. It was Things are still, yeah. Time. Things and... are still not all open. Yeah. I think at that point I was starting to go with more with my gut and just go like, just take a chance, just take a chance. And you yeah. were super uh, tightly wound <laughs> to like, <laughs> we must research everything about podcasting. I'm like, no, we just need a microphone. <laughs> so yeah. It was really messy and you were very careful. Um, yeah. you, you were more like the legal stuff and this and I'm like no no this is just this is just fun we're just talking um and I think we kind of met in the middle yeah we yeah both have learned from each other in this so yeah yeah I, I'm I'm happy to get into this one this is going to be a nice episode it's, it might be short uh, so I guess what we, we can start with why we started it 2021 um you got to think back in that time Every, a lot of isolation still um working and moving forward required a lot more um self-motivation than than it does now that we're back yeah to and real life I think, we, I think we were looking for connection because we were at home yeah there, yeah like you said everything we were still very isolated and we weren't a lot of things were still not open nothing was in person at that time mm -hmm. like no there were no were there were there online there were online there were online things, everything was online but yeah but it, it, it we felt that lack of connection with the online communities or online co what, what i can't think of the word convention no oh, what's the word <laughs> online well, online courses, online. We did everything um, was online, which may yeah that human connection was not there. Yeah, but you had introduced me to podcast, 
because I didn't even yeah. know what a podcast was before that. I was like, it's like a radio show, no. you know? No. <laughs> like yeah, you did it. Like, they're like, no, never had I ever listened to a podcast before that. I had no idea what they were. Yeah. Um, but once you did, and I found how helpful it was to have that companionship in your ear while you're mm-hmm. working, it was a game changer for yeah. me. Now, now I listen to podcasts from every every podcast for artists and another one for like these solving mysteries it was kind of cool <laughs> that I yeah about. yeah and now I'm telling you about podcasts because I listen to when, while I'm driving while I'm exercising uh yeah while I'm cooking whenever I want whenever I don't want music I always have something going and yeah. it's helpful it's um company and you get ideas from it it's it's good yeah. um yeah so I I'm glad that we started yeah so, so i think we were looking for something to do with our time but also connect yeah. yeah and we were doing this already we you and i were meeting in zoom we also had a yeah. group then and this became like our confessionals and we were talking yeah. about our journey and we were both kind of starting our journey and and it was kind of like why are we not sharing this with more people why are we not having a, a larger conversation and yeah that has to me it has helped a lot um yeah we are babies at this and i don't know we are definitely not podcasters that's not our no that's not, that's not what we're doing <laughs> and that's gonna go in this episode you're gonna know all the mistakes we've made <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so i yeah. um but but let's see what we have accomplished in these three years we did try to make it bigger than just a conversation um that yeah. we can share so we started this was your idea Elo chat community in facebook i mean and, yes and, and i liked it a lot I, it's funny because you we didn't agree always at how things should be done at the beginning especially no. we were like yeah. super different in the way they work we were always friends but we were like the approach was definitely different and you wanted it in facebook yeah. and I was i'm, like, I I'm more cautious face. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm more cautious and I research more and I'm more technically uh proficient like technically Oh heck yeah. <laughs> uh, goal inter- goal or I don't know like that and then you're more just like jump in and figure it I out go but then also instinct. you're not as yeah. You're not as technically yeah. None. None. <laughs> no, I am paper and pencil and <laughs> you are like techie. You're the techie yeah. one. But you're a better you're a better writer, I think. And you good um, at outlines and planning topics and well the the top most of the topics were when i was doing dishes or something else and i was like oh, yeah. this, remember i would be like with wet fingers texting you this would make a good episode <laughs> and i'm just leaving it yeah. here so that i remember later yeah. to go back to this text yeah. and you're like oh this one was driving me crazy <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah but most a but, lot of the episodes were like that yeah and, but a reason we branched out into try to create a community is because a lot of what we were doing on Instagram, um, we were, we kind of tried to create a community on Instagram and it wasn't, it, we couldn't interact the same way as if we could mm-hmm. in a Facebook group. Like we couldn't, yeah, you, there's not as much, you can't hold, you can't host videos. Oh, well, you can, but it's just a lot more it limited and you can't talking there you're right you were right yeah. on that yeah that that was a, a little art not like an argument but like a place was like i don't like facebook i'm never in facebook yeah you know and like, I'm like i'm only on instagram yeah. and uh yeah. and you're you're like well no it, it has to be in facebook that's going to be the best so i th- that was one of those things of letting go which i have learned to do a lot and trust and go with it and it was wonderful it's a i'm um uh, it is a, a if you're not familiar with elo chat community on facebook it's called elo chat community isn't it i think so um uh, <laughs> i don't know what it's called i think it is called elo chat community um but it is a, a safe place for illustrators to post their work and they can create partnerships uh, look for critique partners if they want um they can post illustrations and ask for real feedback most of the time we jump in there and we give real not just oh this is nice no 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 like 
this could be better. This is like this. The values here are not working. And the, the people that are posting there are not asking for just tell me if it's pretty or not. They are asking, is this working? Um, yeah. Does it read like correctly? Specific feedback. Yes. Yeah. Is the composition working? And so so it's actually like a working community. And that's really good. It's like having critique partners that you don't meet every time, but they're there when you need them. Um, yeah. and, and a lot of illustrations have... Um, have come out of there for um the scbwi draw this in your style we have critiqued some work there that later on ends up winning um mm -hmm. so this is this is really cool some people are working on books and they just need help with a cover so mm -hmm. I, I like that there's no advertising in it there's no one there are no authors looking for work uh, you know for illustrators yeah. you're not posting because you you want work these are all illustrators sitting in a virtual room working working mm -hmm. and saying hey can you help me come up with a better composition for this or whatever yeah um so i'm proud of that it, it was it was a good accomplishment and initially i think we had wanted it to be a place where the illustrators could connect with each other and hopefully form their own critique groups i don't know if that has really happened in the way we would hoped but um but i still think that the nice thing is they can always come back there for a critique or for a yeah like input on things it has um, been it, now that we've done it it kind of shows us how hard it is to have a critique group for illustrators it seems so much easier for writing than it is for illustration yeah and i is. think it's, it's such a solitude type of work like you are yeah. alone in the zone and maybe because because editing and illustration is harder than editing words because words, you can yeah. move them around. But once the illustration is done and is built upon itself, it's a little bit harder to go and tell someone, you know, how can I change this? Because you're, 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 you might be saying, I have to start all over again. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, that's what we had a critique group that worked. And, and it was, um, it was a good group. It was a good thing that we did every, it, we just, we could not keep it up. Uh, I think yeah, they, they still meet, but we had to leave because it was too much because we had too much on our plate because things started rolling. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't make the time for, for that anymore. Um, but it is hard to find a group that works like that. So, yeah, it then, is. I, I think it's also hard to, to find. find. Yeah, I think it's hard to find people who have similar goals because yes. as illustrators, many of us are at different levels or different places and we're we we have different goals and uh that can influence the way the critique group works because if someone is not uh, in the same path that you yes, are or they're further behind or further ahead or they're focusing on other things uh it it, it makes it may not mesh as well it may not work as well yeah so that's hard too uh, yeah, I think I, a critique group works best when they're all running to try to get uh, that agent or get that something published. If you're doing work for a personal uh, portfolio, mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like the the edge is gone. They're, um, what can I say? Not the edge, but the urgency mm -hmm. uh, of getting this project finished for submission as opposed to it's a piece of artwork that makes me happy that is in my portfolio for for my own benefit for my own um not within trying to get work as a goal mm -hmm. so yeah that I, I do agree that it's um it's easier for critique partners if they are kind of on the same track if you think of yeah cars. yeah even if it's at different levels but they're all on the same track it, it you help push yeah. each other you know mm -hmm. um what else did we accomplish that that um, um the critiques we did live critiques oh yes and that helped us um like uh, it helped to solidify some of the relationships that we have made with um with some of the listeners and some have become friends and um it kind of like it was the beginning of what the Illochat community is. 
because we did the live critiques, people would submit work and we would be like, this is how you fix it. And it, it uh, at the beginning, the um, there was a big emphasis. We had a big emphasis on teaching what we have learned so far. And we still do that in our, yeah. in our, in our uh, episodes, but now um, it's almost like it's been done and here it goes. And if you have a question, we're here. Um, and a lot of it, we we already talked about the technical stuff on how yeah. you do something. So now it's kind of like, this is how you navigate, which is part of our, what we have said, how to navigate this career, um, you know, with submissions and rejections and, and, and the everyday going through it and how, and at the same thing, navigating our lives, because everybody has, you know, that balance of life and, and work. So that mm -hmm. was an all-encompassing kind of podcast where we talked about the art and how to navigate the, the journey of it. Yeah. Um, I think the other things we listed are not really things we've accomplished. Well, this one, uh, Summer Folio is. Oh, I love Summer which, Folio. Yeah. But these two are more of things we've learned, I think. Yes. So Summer Folio, it, I, I'm going to go ahead and do it again this year. That's just. That was one of, another one of those go with your gut kind of things. Um, mm -hmm. I think that one, I kind of took it on my own because I think, I don't know, you were looking for work or something at, the, at that moment. And it was just like, I just want to do this. And it was in my gut that like, this is something. And it was, it, I'm glad I did. It was something I needed for my portfolio and it worked out and it helped a lot of other people to get their portfolios going as well. So I'll definitely do summer for you again. I, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. No, I think it was a great, a great program. Yeah. Um. So for us, it got us through the pandemic, which mm -hmm. helped a lot, and it helped us to become more vulnerable. And that is where we learned <laughs> to roll with the punches and and accept our yeah. mistakes and not not try to be so perfect. Yeah. Because in the beginning, we were so worried about how we sounded our like, um, and then we had these extensive outlines and notes and we would research and we would sit for hours and plan oh, yeah. an episode. <laughs> it, was really, it was really excessive. We do it, not do that anymore. Which at the beginning <laughs> where our kids were in that and you know school was virtual back then still for a while it was yeah. okay but once life yeah. came back and kids moved up to the next level where they needed rights everywhere we couldn't we just couldn't do that anymore we couldn't put three hours in an episode um yeah I didn't realize how much, so much free time the pandemic well I mean <laughs> everyone get, get got a lot more free time during the pandemic but it just it was it was not clear <laughs> to me how much free time extra free time we had uh until after everything started becoming in person again and children yeah jobs were back in person children were had to be driven to things and yeah it was so such a different environment yeah. um but um another thing that we learned from this it helped us become um like a, like adjust um to adjust to changes mm -hmm. and adjust to uh our schedule we're like okay like we're recording on a sunday when can you record when your kids are here when your husband is over there when it's they actually have access to easter this area. right now <laughs> easter but you know my, my, my kids are we had time for eggs yeah and, <laughs> yeah one is away to college the other one's graduating so um, yeah, yeah there's no more eggs in my house there's no more yeah none of that yeah yeah we just fit it in when we can yeah yeah um oh um I'm glad because you know we kept each other company our friendship grew mm -hmm. our friendship grew and changed and became I think a stronger for it because like I said yeah. in the beginning we did not agree we did not 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 in everything and the way to approach the episodes or uh yeah and we had to learn to trust each other more and um yeah we I think we both have to, to learn yeah to trust and then compromise yes and uh, be more flexible with each other 
and not control not. everything like we all have yeah. control. so a huge thing that we learned too is um learn your role accept your role um I, for me to accept that I can't control the stuff that I don't understand that I don't know and we learned to lean on our um expertise and our our strengths yeah because in the beginning we wanted everything to be equal which was unrealistic <laughs> I don't know why we had that we were trying to be we fair wanted... to each other yeah but but in doing that it actually made it harder to complete a tasks and an episode and like we were juggling like one of us would do one episode and uh like rec uh, editing and then the other would do the art and but really that only lasts like the first three yes. I think episodes we quickly realized didn't last long. <laughs> that wherever where yeah. Sunny could edit an episode in a couple of hours get it would it take out. me three yeah, days yeah and I and I would try to get every um and hum and everything out of there and splice and there were 17 million splices and it's in the audio, <laughs> audio track and I'm all confused and overwhelmed with this and you got you just knew what to do and it was easier for you and mm -hmm. it was easier for me to do the covers a little bit faster to do the covers or oh yeah yeah you know the the the, the story lines or something or mm -hmm. just you know even the chitty chatty because I don't shut up <laughs> and you're good at the outlines you're, you usually get stuff jotted down and then I just well, jump we in don't, and add things we don't do the heavy outlines we, we, yeah we don't do them as much <laughs> anymore yeah that's another thing we learned to cut we I think we also learned to like cut out things that were unnecessary we like really trimmed down our process in the beginning our process would like Days. Yes. <laughs> well, you were like, no, the outline needs to be like this, and we need to have three supporting uh, uh, facts. I did, yeah. And I was like, I can't. I felt so like constrained. I'm like, I just want to talk. I just want to talk about mm, normal yeah. stuff. And, no, and that was terrible. You were trying to be very professional, and I had totally, yeah. I, I appreciate that. I was like, <laughs> I can't do the professional stuff. <laughs> and it was probably boring. Like that. That makes it a lot less spontaneous and uh and made it dry and some episodes we felt like we were just reading from the outline yes. and we weren't really talking we re-recorded several episodes because it was like oh I, yeah, yeah it feels so so technical robotic and, yes yeah. like, oh, i go i i was like <laughs> I, I wouldn't listen to this <laughs> but yeah. um it stopped being a product and it became more of like hey this is just what we do. Who listens, listens. Who doesn't want to listen, don't listen. Is that, mm -hmm. And that helps so much to take that pressure off. Um, yeah. And yeah. and I'm going to expand that to like life. <laughs> like I What I learned from the from doing this podcast, and, and I hope like if you're listening to this though, if you're still here, because who cares about the podcast? If you're still listening to this, I learned, me personally, I took a lot from this experiment and yeah. it helped me in my regular life and in my regular career. Um, at the beginning of the podcast, when we were recording, I was so nervous and I would overthink things and yeah. I, I couldn't like, I would be nervous days before we were going to record. And then after I'm rethinking everything I said, and, and it's just, you know, not, not healthy, you know, not a, a, an enjoyable experience. Now it has helped me to just talk and who cares if it's not the right word and who cares if it doesn't sound right and who cares really this is just a podcast it is not the end of the world because I said the wrong word or misspelled something um yeah and now when you I don't remember on... the times you would contact me um and say oh I don't like how my face looked there can you cut that out oh, or, oh, I, yes, just, or, or my, I don't like how voice. I said that word yes, yes. <laughs> and and I was like no it, it was and and you were like oh there's a fan in the background someone's in yeah. my kitchen and I was like who cares if someone's in your kitchen <laughs> like yeah. look now we drink on camera <laughs> not like wa yeah. this water like, not drinking <laughs> drinking water and coffee <laughs> yeah but it it helped let go a little bit you know like let go of the perfectionism 
that sometimes yeah. starts out from any project. Forget the podcast. Even the, you, when you start an illustration, sometimes you don't start it because you're worried how it's going to end. Half of it, half of the, not most of the time, I'm going to say every single time I started an illustration, it never ends how I thought it was going to, because I, I, I figure it out as I go. I mean, it's like, you don't know where you're going to end up until you start moving in any direction. I am not, mm -hmm. I know I'm going on a tangent here, but no, you fine. know, when you start a career in illustration and okay, you can draw. But what should I do? Should I do greeting cards? Should I do children's books? Should I do clothing? Should I do uh, decorative uh, stuff? Should I sell stickers? Should I move in any direction? Just start something. Uh, start putting a portfolio together and see how it flows. Naturally, the stuff that you like to draw will guide you where you have to be um, mm -hmm. and where you're going to be happier doing it. But you, until you start moving, you're never going to get to where you're supposed to be because you can't see where the ending is from where you're standing. The same thing with this whole experiment. I'm glad we tried it. I'm glad we did it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, it, it was never perfect and it's not supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to happen. That's, yeah. That's what I got from this. Yeah. Uh oh yeah so I'm pretty much saying what I have learned from personally yeah. to let go to, <laughs> to let things be okay like now when I teach a class I don't prep for the classes weeks in advance um yeah most of the time when I tell you oh I'm going to teach at the senior center you know tomorrow literally it's the day before and I'm like done I go yeah. and I teach and I kind of trust myself more um that's it. Yeah. Trust yourself more that you have enough knowledge in there that you, it'll get you through. It'll get you through and mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be perfect. And if you stumble, it's fine. How did it help you? Um, it helped, it definitely helped me with perfectionism. Cause I was, yeah, I would, yeah. I'm the type of person who I had to research something before I could even, and then I, I have to be prepared um, and, uh, this helped me get over that a lot. It also did help me with public speaking, I think, because I was so afraid of recording myself speaking. And then in the process of this, I've ha I had to do several classes and presentations and that helped, this helped me prepare for that. Um, I mean, this helped condition me for that, like, Hearing myself, I hated the sound of my voice. Who doesn't so though? At the beginning, who really doesn't? helped me get over that because I have to listen to myself talking when I'm editing. So I'm like, now I don't, uh, whatever. <laughs> Do you listen to the podcast after it's aired? Uh, I used to, but I mean, I've listened to it so many times when I'm editing that I don't need, like, I don't feel like I need to. I don't listen to the episodes fast where you tell yeah. me like check to see yeah. if it's good and I'm like <laughs> I just listen to it that one run and I'm like yeah, sounds yeah, good yeah. to me oh no and then after we go. that I don't no I don't listen to it but yeah. when I am I, I'm listening to podcasts and then um, uh what do you call it and in, in the car and it automatically goes to the next one and sometimes I'm listening and I don't realize that it is ours <laughs> until a little bit later I'm like oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's happened to me um, yeah, I, I like it I like it when I, I yeah. like our pre our, our, our my, my I like the previous episodes the, the, the new episodes first because I don't know I think I hear the fear in our, our voices and our oh our, yeah. how cautious we are and we were it was more technical stuff the, the stuff that I wanted to teach I was like oh you get to actually teach which I like um so I do I do like that yeah I have used our episodes for uh research like mm -hmm. or for classes like the 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 um just the ideas or you know some of the some of the stuff we've actually had to research for our episodes that where we taught I've used some of that for classes so that's helped a lot yeah <laughs> they helped us jumping off points um I think um 
how it's helped us. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've made, we've definitely made friends from, from the yeah, podcast. Yes. Um, Not, and definitely from people we've interviewed, but also from listeners. Like we've made friends with listeners, which is really cool. Yeah. I, the, one of my favorite things is when I get a random email and it's just like, we yeah. just, I just found you and I've been listening to all the yeah. podcasts. And, and because for us, this is like something we started three years ago, but people still find it now. And, mm-hmm. and it feels nice. And and I just hearing you kept me company, you know, in my ear while I was working. And um Yeah. I like that. I like that we we I don't know, we we helped, we made a difference. We helped one person not to be lonely when they were doing it. Or yeah. to have a question and and we were able to answer it or you know, get them an answer to it. Um, well, and I, I, when so, I really appreciate it when someone says you, thank you for s- covering this. That spoke to me, like because money we, episode was big for you on this and, and that one. Yeah, I don't know why I left my agent and uh, though those just hearing that other people uh, are because we, I mean, we don't just talk about you know teaching and like we talk about real life things that are affecting us while with our with our art journey so a lot of people and and that we're mothers and that we're women and that what we're going through when we're so I love that people can connect with where we are at and um so that so they're not yeah they're not alone and we're not alone and we're yeah. going through it so it's kind of it's really cool um and then i remember <laughs> talking about we were getting questions like how do you do the work when you have you know children at home and you have to get this done and and maybe you work outside of the house or maybe you don't work outside of the house and i remember you know we're honest we're like i have a laundry basket full of laundry right here next to me that is not getting done because i'm doing this so you kind mm-hmm. of have to choose you cannot be perfect at everything there is no perfect there is absolutely mm-hmm. no perfect even when you think you're doing perfect so so let go of that and yeah allow things to happen and flow with it that nothing is so important um if the laundry didn't get folded or if today I didn't vacuum or, you know, and I know we're talking about household chores because that's what it's a lot of our part in the house. Um, but then there is driving kids around and making sure that they have everything. And as they grew, because in three years, kids grow a, a ton, especially when you get yeah. to the teenage years, it is incredibly the change that they go through. Um, and how your needs change mm-hmm. and how that affects you. Like this, this year, I'm like, I have all this time. Like for the first time, I have all this time where my attention is not required all the time. I'm here when they want, you know, that that's my role now. I just sit back and wait until I am called to action. <laughs> and because it is their time to shine and solve problems. And I'm here always as you know the safety net Mm -hmm. that's a bigger very different role from before when I was the doer you know I'm no longer yeah I am here they're like let me know if you need me let me know if you need any advice let me know if you need me to take on something um Mm -hmm. and this year was an adjustment for me to figure out what to do with all this time yeah um because I learned that too much time is also not good. Yeah. Um, and you are now that you're you're working outside the home, you're like, okay, busy people get things done because they have very little time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um that that kind of falls like into how did we yeah. keep it going? Um as we progressed, it takes us it took us less time to do the episodes because as with everything that you do the more you do it the easier it is and it's like like drawing you know you draw all the time you draw yeah all the time then 
it will be easier to draw people next time. If you keep draw cats all the time, then it'll, it becomes second nature. But when we do take some time from recording, we're like, where's the yeah. record button? What are we supposed well, to have? <laughs> yeah. Well, because we record in batches, there's sometimes where we don't record for... So when we were doing interviews, we would do those we did those a little, really those were a lot of batches so we went like i think we were like six i don't know was it four or six months last year where we didn't have to record because oh, no, we had yes. so many That's yeah true. we had so many in backed up that i could just edit and put out and so then the first time we recorded this year i think in february we were like really rusty or maybe it was december it was probably december last year we just we couldn't so. remember <laughs> <laughs> We're like, what do we yeah. do? How do we talk? Um, it, it 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 helped that we never changed the beginning. I, I'm like, there's no need to. <laughs> why, why change the, yeah. the uh, you know, or the what, end? Even though your end, website changed, your my website, website changed, so, but you can still find me. It's okay. <laughs> now it's Olga Herrera. That <laughs> is it. That me? I guess I have no idea. I think so. You'll find me. So you you know where I'm at. Whatever. Find me yeah. enough, find me. Who cares? Um, which ones are your favorite episodes? Um, so mine. Uh, so originally, I was gonna say it, "Start Where You're At" is one of my favorites because that's where that one kind of spoke the most to me. Because it's you know you just gotta just gotta begin. You don't. But the thing is, it's not that you're. The start where you're at sounds like it's a time you it's a one-time thing but no start oh, where you're man. at happens continuously like you're continuously restarting it's not you know oh I started three years ago I, I no I I'm restarting every I don't know, six months once a year you know like once a year you're constantly recommitting to things and figuring out if this is where the this is how you if this is this working best for you or you know what what should my goals be or you're constantly redoing re you're constantly restarting uh so i really like that one i also like why not why i left my agent because that kind of it spoke to a lot of people and like that one got the most feedback for us from a lot of people and a lot of questions um because a lot of times you just think you're a finding an agent will solve all of your problems <laughs> you know it will just just finding any agent people don't put enough uh research or emphasis on what kind of agent they should be looking for and they don't they don't really realize what they are looking for until they've experienced it um and then my other one is there our interview with vicky and jelly and uh with vicky johnson and oh wait, wait i'm gonna mess up their names Jillian Reed. Jillian Reed. Uh, yeah, because, well, uh, one, because I love that book. Molly's Tuxedo is so, so sweet. Such a sweet book. But I just love Jillian's artwork. All, all, actually, all the interviews were fun for different reasons. Um, that was my favorite one to do because they were really easy. They were easy to talk to as a team. And um, they, uh, it was really fun to hear about the behind the scenes of that book and yeah that was one of my favorites so those I are my like favorites when we talk to artists because it's like maybe you don't know them you have never seen their work all of a sudden they come into your orbit and you're like oh wait i'm discovering but there is a level where we're all joined we're like oh we all fear that blank canvas and we all get mm -hmm. we, all, we all have the ugly yeah. middle in our careers and in yeah. our in our <laughs> in our pieces you know like illustrations we're like is this gonna work? Am I messing up? And the doubt, and it all, we all have that same journey, you know, like within within that. Um, so I like that. I like I like I like meeting new people that have had um setbacks, and you know yeah. what I liked a lot that a lot of people are started late in life, like we did. Yeah, and it's not as rare as as you think. So if anybody like is thinking that oh yeah. it's too late to start think now and a lot of people had different everyone's path was a little different but they all had did every I think everyone we talked to did something else before they went into picture books like it yeah. wasn't always just jump they jumped into picture books they 
they either had a different career or they had a different uh, illustration career in something else in animation or stationery or uh, yeah. graphic design or yeah it was all and they kind of led them to picture books yeah or art teachers yeah I think my favorite episode is don't work in a bubble and that one like you say spoke spoke to me because I worked in a bubble for so so long before that yeah before before I, I didn't even know about conferences I didn't know about I didn't have Instagram that's the word I, I was looking for conferences, conferences. <laughs> All right, if you made it to this part of the episode, that was the word that you're supposed to put at the beginning of the episode. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Yeah, you were a member of SCBWI for what? I have been a member. 10 years or? For a long time, longer? since I graduated from yeah. college. But I never Before read you emails, went to a conference. Never yeah. did anything with it. Um, yeah. I didn't even know what the whole SCBWI thing was. I mean, a teacher told me yeah. about it, so I became a member, but I really didn't never read the emails. It was never the right time. Um, yeah. And the whole idea of going to a conference, you can understand, I didn't even go out to camp as a kid. So I don't know that whole, I'm going somewhere to yeah. hang out with people. <laughs> I don't, we don't, what is that? Like, is that what rich people do? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <this>? So, <laughs> That was such a strange thing for me to go to a conference. Um, I was yeah. like, what do people do in conferences? What What is it? I had no idea. So I didn't do podcasts. I didn't have social media. I you, didn't you had no connection. Yeah, you were in a real bubble. Yeah. That's why that episode really, I was like, oh, there's an entire world of people that, not just people that draw, but people that are yeah. trying to make this into a career and going somewhere. And oh, guess what? there's an entire path that you can follow with instructions <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh I see um critiques I didn't get critiques until in, in in college we got we critiqued each other's work but never yeah. again did I get another critique until that my first conference 2018 the fall focus I remember that that was my first critique yeah. with a professional in the industry so that's why that episode, because I didn't realize how much in a bubble I actually had been all along. Yeah. And how much easier the journey is when you're not in a bubble and when you actually have a community that you can learn from. So that yeah. is one of my favorite episodes. And John Sanford, because he's my mentor and I love him very, very mm -hmm. much. <laughs> so those, those are the two that stand out the most in my, in my head with, um, with our favorite episodes. So Thank you for being part of this community. Thank yes. you for for listening, for sending your 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 emails or your questions, and and for sticking with us all these you know through all these three years. Um, yeah, I'm bring Yata back out here. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and celebrating these small accomplishments that mean so much to us. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why do we do it? Because we like it. That's it. There's no, yeah, this is yeah. not a, a job. This is a side thing that we do. And mainly is um, so that we don't work in a bubble. Yeah. Yes, yeah. for connections. Yeah. So happy three-year anniversary. Yeah. Happy three-year anniversary, Olga. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Bye.